is the Burgundy Bull Review. I'm Justin of HGTR.Nation, joined by Sam of WSH Football 365. And quick jump from week one to week two of the NFL season here in Washington is staying at home and taking on the New York Giants, who are coming to town for a Thursday night matchup. Washington somehow has a five-game losing streak against the Giants, who have been the worst team in football since 2017. And Washington is also coming off a disappointing loss against the Los Angeles Chargers. Two things. We're hoping to see the team get right in this matchup. Sam, right off the bat, what's some stuff you're looking for? I mean, it's been a short week, not much opportunity for practice or healing up. So really seeing, I guess, the team, not necessarily with their backs against the wall, but just got to respond right away after a tough loss. Don't want to be 0-2 going into uh, you know, a travel game to Buffalo, uh, one of the elite teams in the NFL. Um, one of the main things that I noticed right off the bat uh, in, in terms of matchup, I want to see the def- our, our quote unquote elite defense rebound uh, against a team that we easily should beat, and show us you know why they you know are so highly touted because they had a lot of difficulties last week. And in Ron Rivera's press conference today, he did say that he will be holding them accountable. And you know, I I wish that they didn't have to like have that conversation or have that loss after week one, but maybe that's a testament to how young the team is. And they'll take their lumps and learn from it. But I think the the def- the defense in a, in a whole needs to show something much better than they did on Sunday. I definitely agree. I think that's the biggest factor here. Washington got just bullied in the trenches on both sides of the ball against the Chargers. And the Giants, I mean, their offensive line, obviously there are some questions for the defensive line. No slouches. So right off the bat, pass rush needs to be better offensive line needs to be better I think I mean obviously it's completely blatant that the trenches are where everything happens in football but could not be more true coming into this matchup especially with the kind of performance we saw on Sunday so really looking to see if I guess any one of the guys in the D-line will step up I mean I was a bit confused by how I, I guess not how few but just like Jack Del Rio did not play these guys a ton or as much as you would expect. I mean, a lot more defensive line rotation than one might assume, given the kind of depth behind our top guys. But so I'm hoping we'll keep the D line out there longer, hopefully take advantage of a good Giants offensive line. And on the flip side, just not seeing the offensive line get bullied. I'm hoping they'll help out Sam Cosme a bit more. Maybe Charles Leno looks a bit better when there's not as many good pass rushers to go against. But – yeah, I think that it all comes down. I mean, it starts and ends with that. For sure. And and another obvious main point is what is Taylor Heineke going to do? You know, we've seen him uh, you know, have a couple games with the team going back to, to last year between the Panthers and Tampa. And uh, then there's a little bit of preseason play. And, and the team definitely seems to have a different spark when Taylor Heineke's on the field. But can Taylor stay healthy? Because he has been injured in I want to say every single NFL game he's played extended time in. So that'll be something to watch. Uh, if the offense can get started early, like I think that is pivotal to this game. The offense gets started early and let the defense hold their ground. And and I think they come away with a W here. Well, I know I express some coaching questions or some took issues with some of the stuff we saw Sunday. So another big thing, at least, that I want to check out is Jack Del Rio versus Jason Garrett. Now, not that I pay attention to the Giants offense that much, but looking over a bit of Giants Twitter, reading some of the stuff they're fans say, not a lot of people are happy with the kind of offense Jason Garrett calls. And I'm just interested to see what kind of rebound game we get from Del Rio in a short week. Are Is he going to play the same kind of scheme and just hope that against a lesser talented offense, we'll get better results. Is he going to rely on, on the same stuff that we relied on going into week one? What kind of change will we see? I don't know, but I'm hoping to see at least some kind of coaching improvement or not as many opportunities for criticism uh, on the defensive side of the ball, especially against an offense that is not well respected across the league. Yeah, you definitely want to see improvements. And, and this could either – this game's going to make this the mindset of everyone either go one way or the other way. And if they don't come in and soundly beat this team, like they need to soundly beat the Giants. They don't need to be driving down the field to beat Daniel Jones by one point. I, I want to see them win by by at least 10 points because like, I think they're a better team. 
I think that they have far better coaching. I just want to see them improve on last week, and, and I think we have guys that will do that. So let's hope. I also really want to see William Jackson versus Kenny Galladay, the two, I'd say, biggest free agent additions for both of these teams. Galladay, not much of a factor in week one against the Broncos, but I think that was more so lack of targets rather than, you know, like knack on his talent, should I say. Jackson obviously coming off a really good game week one. Uh, is that going to be kind of like a – are they going to have Jackson shadow Galladay? I mean, he, he didn't stick on Allen the whole time in week one, so I don't think they're really looking at having any one of their corner shadow. And I guess the same thing applies to Kendall Fuller, who's coming off a bad game. Like, how do our, our upper-tier cornerbacks pair up against uh, a pretty good wide receiver when there's not many other weapons in that wide receiver room for the Giants, or at least none to really be afraid of? So, I mean, how are they going to scheme for Kenny Gade is the big thing I'm looking at, too. I mean, and that goes back to coaching, like we were talking about. I personally think that he should have been shadowing Keenan Allen all last week. I, I just too many people out of position, and William Jackson was one of the only bright spots in that secondary. I'd like to see more of him on elite players, such as, well, Kenny Dalladay is close to elite, but I'd like to see more of William Jackson on the other team's best receiver because he's clearly our best corner. I, I, I just want the team to be put in better opportunities by the coaching staff. Also worth noting, you talked about how Heineke has gotten injured in every game that he is – played in in the NFL, obviously hoping that does not happen Thursday night. But this is also the first regular season or, I guess, game with the Washington football team where Heineke will be coming in as the unquestioned starter, not last-minute starter, should I say. I mean, on the Tampa Bay game, he kind of came in last second or last couple probably hours leading up to the game instead of Alex Smith to not have that week to prepare. Or prepare. Obviously, against the Chargers, had his number called on second quarter. So – even though it's a short week, this is the first time that Heineke is QB1 a couple days in advance going into the game. How the offense look because of that? Is Scott Turner just shoving Taylor Heineke into the offense designed for Ryan Fitzpatrick? Is he calling certain plays around Heineke? Is it going to be some of the similar stuff that we saw in the second half of the Chargers game? What kind of adjustments get made in these short few practices? So I think that's a – Beyond like the trenches matchup we talked about, that's the second biggest thing I'm looking at. Forgot to toss that in when you mentioned that point. No, and it's a great point. I did see uh, Scott Turner say today that, or rather Taylor Heineke said today, that him and Scott Turner will be working together to tailor, <laughs> no pun intended, tailor a game plan uh, towards his strengths. So. I just I want to see them open the damn offense up. I know there's got to be more to it, and I feel like they're just holding back. Oh, hopefully we get that with Taylor, and hopefully it's not just like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. I want to toss this out there. See if it's. A, I saw a little bit of discussion about this on Twitter today, but this is the last divisional game Washington plays until Week 14. I want to say, which is December. So. About three months between this divisional matchup and the other one. And considering the team's sitting at 0-1, they got to travel to Buffalo the week after this, given a couple of days of rest, but still Buffalo top five team in the NFL. Is this a must-win game considering, the I guess, the giant divisional gap in terms of games played and also the kind of stretch Washington is coming up on? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of tossed and turning about that, but I wanted to hear your thoughts on, is this a must-win game for Washington already? Because, I mean, we've all seen the statistic about teams that start 0-2 and, and they're probably going to make the playoffs. No, it's not a must-win game. Should they win it? And would it be extremely helpful if they did? Yes. Statistically, it's not. And it could put them into a tailspin going into Buffalo. But this team has proven to be resilient down the stretch. So I'm not ready to quite say Week 2 is a must-win game uh, in, in terms of statistics but in terms of morale and 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 fan feeling towards the squad yes i would say in, in that in that sense if, if you're trying to get what i'm saying that's more so what i was implying with the must win obviously they could start zero and two and technically win their last 15 and it wouldn't matter that they start zero and two but i guess with probability and the kind of teams they're playing 
the kind of situation they had faced themselves in and the kind of expectations we had coming into the year. It, it, like must win is kind of not in the, the sense that you're not going to the playoffs if you don't win this game, but they like things are a lot easier if this game is won as opposed to starting 0-2 and then being frantic about going into that Buffalo matchup. Oh, no doubt. It would definitely be a better situation. I would rather come off this with a win, have a short little like almost mini buy going into, you know, because they don't have to play Sunday going into uh, the Sunday after. So there's only benefits from winning this game and there's only negatives that can come from losing it. So I don't like using the term must win this early in the season, but it's about as damn close as you can get to it. So glossing over the injury report real quick. Fortunately, not much on Washington's side. Uh, only guy on there who's not an IR is Antonio Gibson. I think he was a full participant today, so no real doubts about if he's going to play or not. But on the Giants, there are a couple of notable names there. I mean, Evan Ingram, starting left guard Shane Lamo, if I'm pronouncing that right, Saquon Barkley, uh, all those guys all either limited or did not participate two days out from the game. So, I mean, we won't get any updates on that tonight, but, I mean, that's three offensive starters, right? I mean, I don't believe Ingram played versus uh, Denver, but... He did not. That's three offensive starters right there that are not practicing at a good capacity. Less than yeah. Go to the game. Yeah, and they're starting against, you know, or they're going to be supposed to be starting against the level of what our defense is. So you'd think that they'd be trying to get him some reps if they could. Uh, I think Wednesday, obviously, uh, we're recording this Tuesday for anybody that's listening, but you know, the Wednesday practice will, you know, give us a much better idea. But it is not good to see Cam Brown, Evan Ingram, and Shane Lemieux all did not practice Tuesday. And obviously we know Saquon's coming off of that knee injury last year. He's been a limited participant, uh, didn't do much in, 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 in week one. So... Uh, definitely have an advantage term uh, in terms of injury versus uh, New York football giants. So Washington is favored by four points over under set at 42 and a half. I mean, I think uh, I'm going to pick Washington to win just because we've gotten the sense of the past couple of matchups. They've always played better than New York, but I found ways to give the game away. Should we say five turnovers? Actually, maybe, actually seven turnovers, I believe. Um, it was either five or seven for their 2020 matchups, the Giants. But no, it was seven turnovers. Sorry, okay, I'm going back and forth on that number. It was seven turnovers by Washington in two games against the Giants in 2020, and the Giants won by a combined five points between those two matchups. And I don't think the Giants, I think they only had one or two turnovers in comparison. So I'm thinking that's the key, hold on to the football, and you're winning the game. I mean, I think... I would pick the under there, but I'd probably go more. Um, I'd pick Washington to cover, but I go under on that forty-two and a half. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take the under as well. It's just it's hard to predict any like more of an offensive performance than was last week because we just haven't seen offense with this team since like Kirk Cousins, unfortunately. So yeah, under for me too. Uh, they gotta. <clears throat> Got to figure out how to protect Heineke. Heineke has to figure out how to protect himself. Don't want Kyle. Do you, we do absolutely do not want to be on our third quarterback after one in week two. We they have to find out a way to protect him. He has to be cerebral enough to not overextend himself towards an injury. All that being said, what's your game prediction, Sam? What what score are we looking at here? I think the I think Washington comes out and gets a statement game. I'll, I'll you know like I said in our score predictions, uh, I think it's going to be a blowout. Uh, I think they'll win by at least ten points. I'm going to say twenty-seven to thirteen, Washington, with one of those touchdowns being a defensive touchdown. Throw a little uh, seasoning on that prediction. I am not quite as optimistic in the offense, should I say? Not necessarily the team, but. I've gotten to the point with the offense where it's I got to see it to believe it if they can put up a certain number of points. So for right now, I think my score prediction before the season was 20 to 13. I'm going to adjust that a tiny bit, go 21 to 14 here for Washington, have them taking the win. 
I think Taylor Heineke has a solid game. I think we'll kind of get a bit of a continuation of what we saw from that Chargers game. I don't think he'll necessarily light the world on fire, but I don't think 230 yards, rushing touchdown, and a passing touchdown are out of the out of the realm of possibility. So I'll be going with Heineke for my player of the game and a 21 to 14 victory for Washington. Very, very plausible. Uh, my player of the game, I believe, is going to be Logan Thomas. Uh, it's it's very evident that Taylor Heineke enjoys the size and athleticism that our star tight end brings, and I think he has a stat line of eight receptions for 100 yards and two touchdowns. He's going to score two offensive touchdowns. That's all we have for this episode, guys, and thanks for tuning in. Tune in after the Washington football team plays the New York football Giants Thursday night as we recap everything that happened in all four quarters. I'm Sam of WSH Football 365, and that's Jess of HTTR.Nation, both on Instagram. Follow us on all places where you can get podcasts, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube. Talk to you next time. Go football team.